Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Mark Harrison and I've been traveling and making videos full time for about four years now. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've seen my face before, then welcome back. This video is sponsored by Wondrium, but more on that later. So last year I made a video about my gear and I upgraded from Micro Four Thirds to full frame and I believed I had the perfect setup for traveling and making videos. If you're interested in checking that one out, then here's the link right here. This current video builds off of that one and I'm gonna tell you what's changed, what gear I've replaced, and what I've learned from another year of making videos on the road. But before we jump into that, I might mention what makes me different from any of the other YouTubers that released my gear videos. Well, I believe I'm one of the few that actually don't have a home base or an office and I have to carry everything on my bag. I travel full time all year and I'm always on the road. So that means I'm always looking for the least amount of gear. I only want the gear that I absolutely cannot live without. So let's begin with the most important, the DSLR. I've been using the Canon R5 for a full year now and it's been amazing. When it was first released, it received quite a few bad reviews on the overheating issue. However, for me, it's not really a huge deal for run and gun style videography. I've encountered the overheating issue twice this year. Once when I was filming a music video for Katy, and we were filming in slow motion, 120 frames most of the day. A couple times it overheated, I had to put it in the freezer and then wait a few minutes and then we can continue shooting. But here we are. I also had it overheat when I was shooting in Dubai because it was 45 degrees, especially in the desert. So I had to switch to 60 frames per second and shoot most of the video like that. However, other than those two scenarios, I've never had a problem with the overheating issues in 2021. So basically I love this camera for one major reason, which separates it from all the other DSLRs and that's the in-body stabilization. I don't need to waste time setting up a gimbal. I can just run around and get Beautiful, smooth, stable footage. There are other things I love about this camera, like the flip screen and the durability. However, those are all comparable with other camera models these days. For example, the Sony a7S III, also an amazing camera with many of the same features. I've also been incredibly happy with this 42 megapixel sensor. What a beast, ton of information. The photos have been crisp, been really happy with that. Another thing that I love is the video time-lapse mode. So after you're shooting a time-lapse, it automatically creates a video and you can review it right away. And that's saved a lot of time when especially you're shooting something that's really important. My GH5 also had this feature, but many full frame cameras were late to make this adjustment. It's only mirrorless cameras that are starting to make this adjustment. Non-mirrorless, I guess cameras with mirrors don't even have built-in intervalometers. So they're kind of becoming pretty ancient now. Okay, on to lenses. So one year ago, I naively bought just two lenses and I thought that would suffice. I bought the 1535 and the 7200, but it turns out that space in between 35 to 70 is incredibly important. After five months of shooting on the 1535, I realized that I just couldn't live without the 2470. So I sold the 1535 and got this beauty. The 2470 is truly the best lens out there. It's even pretty good for portrait photography. It does it all. I can even vlog at 24. I just hold the lens like this, so I don't even really need the 1535 for vlogging. Goodbye 1535, hello 2470, and I've never been more happy with that switch. I also sold the 70 to 200. It's a great lens, but it's just not close enough. So I upgraded to the massive one to 500 beast. Yes, it's heavier and takes up more space in my bag, but wow, I'm so happy with this lens. Nothing compares to it when it comes to clarity, compression, and shooting things that are far away, for, for example, wildlife. The R5 has this really cool feature where you can select the autofocus to focus on an animal's eye. So this lens, let's say if you're on a lake or safari and you're shooting an animal and you switch that feature and it locks in on the animal's eye, it's one of the coolest features I've ever seen. Back to wide angle. Since I did get rid of the 1535, I didn't have a wide angle lens in my bag. And in certain scenarios, they are quite useful. So I did pick up the Rokinon 12 millimeter 2.8, which is what I'm filming on right now. And it's also what I filmed the star lapse and the Northern Lights time lapse on with that lens. It's great, also great for tight spaces, indoor spaces, and also for shooting funky photos that are up close or just any time that the 24 is slightly too tight. Next up, I also picked up this 50 millimeter f1.8, super cheap, $200. 
and it makes a great portrait lens and it's so light and you barely even notice it in your bag. I shot a Michael Kors commercial in Iceland uh, last month and this lens was great for shooting the models with. So here's one thing people don't talk about much is the percentage breakdown of how often you use each lens. So I use a 2470 75 to 85% of the time. I almost never take it off. Next up, I use the telephoto, the 100 to 500, around 10%, maybe 15% of the time. A lot of times that's for photos to get that compression. Next up, the 12 millimeter, I'll use like 5% of the time. And then the 50 millimeter, I don't know, 2%, 4%, very low amount of time. When you do need them, they're very handy to have. However, I'm not using them that often. So if you could live without one of these lenses, look at it from a percentage standpoint. And of course, everyone says if they could only ever have one lens, it would be the 2470. Okay, onto the drone, and there's no real massive update here because I'm still using the Mavic 2 Pro. I had two of my three batteries swell up on me. This part here just kind of blows out. So I have to replace those two, which is pretty annoying. There was a lot of hype around the Mavic, Mavic 3. The Micro Four Thirds sensor is nice and the extended flight time is also great. However, it doesn't justify the absurd rise in price. They're charging $5,000 for 10-bit 422. The Mavic 2 10-bit 4.2 is already built in here. And you can get one of these now for like $1,600 or the Flymar package for $2,000. The $5,000 upgrade for the Cine Cine package that they've labeled it is a complete scam. They just know filmmakers need that 10-bit footage and they know that they'll pay for it. It's almost as a big a scam as the Mavic 2 Zoom. Like, what a gimmick that was. Completely useless. And speaking of Zoom, the Mavic 3 has that Zoom feature for, they, they market it as a scouting or a scoping thing because you cannot film with it. It's completely useless. So I think that's also just another gimmick. But if I crash my Mavic 2 this year, Maybe I'll upgrade to the three and not get the Cine package because the extended flight time is nice. Maybe I'll just buy another Mavic 2 if I can find them because they discontinued them. So that's unfortunate. It's a solid drone. On to the next action camera. So in my last video, I stated I had a seven and I would upgrade as soon as it broke. And literally the next time I used my GoPro seven, it broke. So now I have the nine. The nine and the 10 are very similar. I barely even notice a difference. I don't think there is much of a difference. So it doesn't really matter which one you have. I rarely use GoPro anyways, except for underwater. This year I spent five months in Mexico, did a lot of free diving, and the GoPro is great for filming underwater. And I also grabbed this underwater case to be able to film at super depths when I'm free diving and scuba diving so it can survive under the atmosphere pressure down there. Okay, 360 camera, I love 360 cameras. I talk about them all the time. And in my last video, I said I had the One R and I still have it. However, the stitching on this isn't quite that good. So I upgraded to the One X2. This camera is waterproof. The stitching is way better. You don't have to worry about the angle of the camera. So the pole will show up. It's just, you just put it on the stick like this and it's perfect. Uh, the sound quality is better on this. Super fun to use. I never use my GoPro anymore for action camera. This is my go-to. Because basically you can just point it out and don't have to worry about where you're pointing. You can choose the angle and post. Okay, so my backup camera, I told, I said in the last video, I used to have a Sony RX100. I sold that, wasn't using it enough because honestly, phones are great and they're always in your pocket. I'm still using the iPhone 11. I ordered an iPhone 13 for back home because of the wide angle. The iPhone 13's wide angle is actually pretty good now. The one on the 11 is super grainy and anything else other than perfect light, you notice how bad it is. Okay, let's take a quick moment now to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Wondrium. Wondrium is where you find the answer to anything you've ever wondered about and some things you never imagined you wondered about. They are carefully curated collection of short and long form videos, tutorials, how to's, travel logs, documentaries, and more is academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched, and relentlessly entertaining. Lately, I've really been enjoying the series on World Heritage Sites. It's amazing to learn more about some of the places that I've already visited and others that I haven't. For example, the history of the Taj Mahal ma mausoleum is fascinating. Did you know that the emperor built this tomb just for his wife? It's renowned as one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. Please visit wandrium.com slash Mark Harrison or click the link in the description to start your free trial today. Travel lights. I'm only traveling with one light and it's the mini from Falcon Eyes and it's perfect. It does a great job lighting up any scene you can put on top of your camera if you want or just light up a scene like I'm doing right now. 
It's really small, light, it has a good diffuser on it. You can change temperature settings. It's really got everything and I love it. Okay, I've really been wanting to give an update on this travel bag since I've been using it, field testing it almost every day. I travel with it all the time for an entire year now. This is the German built Compagnon bag that I bought last year and was excited to get using because I was tired of the Wandered bag, which broke five times on me and they told me, you know what, no more replacements for you. I'm like, what kind of lifetime warranty is that? I don't know. So I'm glad I switched to this bag and I have to say, it's so tough. The waist straps are super supportive. The clips are all great. I love this 12 liter roll top and it's got this magnetic clip here. I love this thing it's so fast like that. 12 liter roll top, super handy. Camera cubes are really, really solid, really stable. You can customize those however you like. If I could say only one single thing, is this right here is slowly kind of getting looser and that holds the laptop. So I might have to replace that or get a bit stronger. I mean, nothing bad to say other than of course the price. However, when you're trying to protect this type of gear, this type of expensive gear, investing in a travel bag like this is a no-brainer. So lastly, accessories. I have this SD case here, which is also doubles really nicely for when you're getting different SIM cards for your phone. I still have my four two terabyte SanDisk SSDs with this, these little traveling cases. Really super handy, although I cannot wait till they upgrade to an eight terabyte one. I think Glyph has them. They're like $2,000 though, so incredibly expensive. However, as cameras get more and more file size heavy, I plan on upgrading to the eight terabytes so I can have like 32 terabytes in these little cases. That would be amazing. Laptop, I still have the 2019 MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. I don't have the M1 Max. I can still edit 4K footage on here without using proxies, so it's still fast enough. I don't feel like I need to upgrade yet to the M1 Max. All my accessories are still the same as the last video. Also still using the Micro Video Pro. It's a cheap mic, yet it's been doing pretty well for me. All right, that's it for my gear update. Let me know if you think there's something that I missed or there's a piece of gear that you have that you cannot live without. If you have any questions about gear or if you need some recommendations, feel free to drop a comment. I'll for sure get back to you. Thanks for watching, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.